Hello, my name is Raven. Welcome to my cloth simulation tutorial. Alright, the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to delete our cube, so hit X and OK. Now we're going to want to do is we're going to create a UV sphere for our cloth to interact with. So hit space, add, mesh, UV sphere. OK. And then what you're probably going to want to do is you're probably going to turn set smooth on. Let's give it a more smoothened look. Alright, now we will create our cloth. So, space, add, mesh, plane, hit S to scale it up, and then hit 5, and then enter. Scale up about 5 blended units, and there you go. Alright, next thing we're going to do is we're going to subdivide. Alright, so tab in edit mode while the plane is still selected. Hit W key to pull up the specials menu. And it's subdivided about four times. Alright, there you go. Okay, now next thing I'm going to show you is vertex groups, which you can use to lock your cloth to set vertices. So hit A to deselect all vertices. Hit B to pull up the box selection. And highlight this row. Hit New right here, if you're still on the editing panel. New. And then assign. Alright, and then exit out of tab. Or, edit, sorry, edit mode. Exit out of edit mode with tab. And then turn on set smooth while we're here. And then go to the objects panel. Physics. Turn cloth on. And turn on pane of cloth. And then just hit Alt A. What in the world? Ah, okay, there you go. Not too sure what happened there. Um, and there you go. The cloth is locked to these top vertices. And will just fall. It won't fall indefinitely like you saw before. Alright. I'm just going to go ahead and turn it off. As we won't be using it. Now let's select our sphere. Go to collision. Turn on collision. Then go back to our plane. And just raise it up to where it's above the camera. Hit zero, by the way, to jump to the camera view. And then just take it up. And I'm actually going to move it over some. Nah, there we go. That should do it. That way it will fall, hang for a bit, and then continue to fall down. Rather than if you left it at the default position, it would just fall and then just hang there over the cube, which is fine. Or, sorry, UV sphere. Okay, then, what I'm going to do is, alright, sorry. Now I'm going to explain the cloth panel. Alright, this is the, this obviously is the structural stiffness of your cloth. This is the bend stiffness. The higher this is, you get, well, obviously, as it says, you get less wrinkles, but you, the wrinkles are bigger. This is the springiness of the cloth. This is air friction. This is the quality of the cloth simulation. It goes as high as 80. I don't recommend setting it that high, but if you need a more accurate and better looking simulation, you can set it up there. I'm just going to set this to about 20. And this is obviously the mass. And this is the gravity. I'll just leave this alone. This right here is the presets for each one, like, oh, sorry, like different presets that they've made, and you can set it to rubber, denim, leather, I'm just going to leave mine at cotton. Alright, now I'll go over to collision, and enable self-collisions, so, sorry, self-collision. So it will be able to collide with itself, and obviously you want to leave collisions on so you can interact with your sphere. I'm going to set this to the max, which is 20. I'm also going to self-collision to 10. Um, if you have an older, a bit older of a machine, you could probably want to set this a little bit lower. But for me, it shouldn't really bother me too much. It shouldn't take too long to uh, bake it. And for cotton or denim, you probably want to set collision 
up to about, or sorry, friction up to 20. And then I'm going to set the in frame simulation at 125. And I'm going to go back to the scene view and set that to 125 as well. Okay, now I'm going to begin the baking process. So click bake. And while that bakes, I'm going to pause this and we'll resume when it's done baking. Alright, nope, it's done. Now let's see what it looks like. Hit all day. Oops, all day. Ah, and there we go. That looked good. Alright, now for the fun part to create a material for the plane. Hit add new. I'm going to select the previous material that was there. I'm going to set mine a nice orangey color. Alright, and then we're going to go to shaders. So I'm going to turn the specularity down to 0.2. Alright, and then which one do? Oops. I just want to select the. Uh, and then. Once you have the sphere selected, you want to just add a new material and you can just leave it alone. And then go to the worlds button, take this, oh, take this, sorry, click this. And this will be your background color for your scene. I'm going to set mine to C, all C's. And you have a nice grayish background. And then turn on ambient occlusion, jump down to whatever frame you'd want to, I'm going to go to 61 and then hit F12 to do a test render and there you have it you have your wait, hold on, I'm going to adjust the camera a bit more but there you have it and the lighting as well Alright, render. Ah, there we go. That looks much better. Alrighty, well, I'm going to pause it again and I'm going to render out what the final animation will look like. To do that, I'm also going to select the output, select this, that, and then hit desktop, and then select output pictures, go over here where it says format. Where it says JPEG, go to AV Raw, and then click Animate. And here's where I'm going to pause it while it renders each and every single frame. Alright, welcome back. It is completed, and here's the outcome. Eh, it doesn't look too bad. Um, you would probably want to increase the number of vertices for more accurate, well, more realistic collision. But, for the sake of this tutorial, I decided not to add too many vertices, but maybe you would want to subdivide it one or two more times. Okay, thank you for tuning in, and I should have a new tutorial coming out soon.